23 win season with an NCAA tourney invitation. Offensively, these teams like to play around the arc, but not that arc, this arc. And when you talk of arcs in St. Louis, this spoon has dished up a three-point scoring machine. But when you talk defense, this man has built a reputation of shutting down machines. Can the Braves shut down the Billiken machine? Can Spoon's Billikens win in this new home? Does anyone know what a Bullet Army is? And what is a Billiken anyway? Confused? You won't be after this episode of Hoops. Today in these brand new digs, the St. Louis Billikens play host to the Bradley Braves. We're live from the Keel Center where 17,000 are going to be here to enjoy it all. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Brando welcoming you to more NCAA basketball here on ESPN. Generally, November games are preparatory to the conference season. But where these two teams are concerned, they're so close, only three hours apart. You have to look at the jump start from 92-93 to 93-94. Almost mirror images of one another. And as I bring in my... key today I think distribution and defense the key for him on the other side you look at St. Louis this is a basketball team that rings the threes Claggett, Highmark and Waldman they shot 520 threes last year that's more than all their opponents combined Jim Molinari told me earlier today he just wants to make it to the first TV timeout his club had to play yesterday he's concerned about weary legs today we'll be back it started with the idea of giving truckers a better two-way radio system then with a war chest of 3,000. ESPN's coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Advil, advanced medicine for pain. No non-prescription pain reliever is proven to last longer than Advil. And by new Fisher favorites, tropical fruit and nut mix. It's Fisher flavor, or it's just plain nuts. They're energized in St. Louis, and after all, there's no hockey, there's been no baseball. They're ready for some spoon ball. And we begin with the starting lineups for Bradley. We highlight Anthony Parker coming off a 29-point performance against Oregon State at home in Peoria yesterday. He's one to watch. He has the whole package. And for the St. Louis Billikens, Erwin Claggett, the senior out of Venice, Illinois, is a young man. As Larry mentioned, he can rain threes, but he also starts much of St. Louis's offense with his defense. Tim, one of the things that I like about this St. Louis club and Charlie Spoonar's Billiken team is the fact that they've got seven seniors on this club. Yeah. This is a team deep with experience. They're coming off a terrific year last year, a turnaround year, as is Bradley. But St. Louis is a dangerous basketball team this year. This is a good club. Donnie Campbell will be jumping with Deion Jackson to get this one underway. The Billikens in white. Bradley and the Road Red. Our officials, Eric Harmon, Ted Hillary, and Tom O'Neill. Veteran class of blue chip caliber. Harmon was a star in that movie, you'll recall, a couple of years ago. Opening tip is controlled to the Braves. St. Louis opens up in a man-to-man -man defense. Interesting matchup with Claggett on right. Both good defenders. St. Louis worked extensively on their defense yesterday, particularly the inside defense. Klein with the dump down. Parker and Funches, that is Funches, counted on a foul. Charlie Spoonar told me yesterday at their workout, he says, I am really concerned about our interior defense. Bradley loves to pound it down inside. They did this against Oregon State yesterday when they won a big game to open their season in Peoria. And Tim, really a big indication on Bradley as to how their legs are going to be is this trip down here after having played a game less than 24 hours ago. Wayne Funches. Again, Bradley off to a good start with that field goal. Let's watch St. Louis. I talked about their three-point shooting at the top of the show. This club loves to go out there. Watch Bradley extend their defense to try to shut that down. High mark. Looking for the open man down low. Any one of three guys out there. That'll be a reach. Hand checking a major factor not only in the NBA this year, but in the NCAA. And that time, Billy Wright got caught with the reach in. Let me ask you something. You think the emphasis in the NBA of going out and trying to reduce the hand checking has filtered down to the college ranks? I don't think there's any question about it. I think so too. Watch the 
cutting. St. Louis does an excellent job on their offense and the cuts across the lane. Waldman finds an open Robinson. David Robinson, a little shorter than the Admiral, but also effective from three-point range. Robinson gives St. Louis the 3-2 lead. What St. Louis needs is another three-point shooter. Watch Bradley again. They'll try to get it inside. Punjay uses the window again. Difficult job in there by Highmark trying to guard Funches, who's a really good post-up player in there. Highmark a little bit out of position on the defensive end down there. Nice look. Robinson can't get it to go. Stays with it and draws the foul from Klein. Well, this is the Admiral, too. David Robinson just went to the floor on a very strong offensive rebound. Good pass again by Claggett in there. He really hammered that backboard. Kept it alive. He came down with it and got thrown to the floor. A takedown, and he gets two free throws for it. Well, they're going to say he wasn't in the act. Mm. I thought he was. He was I shooting the ball up. H. Waldman triggers it in. Oh, this one's right out of the scouting report. Off the back iron. Cleared to Parker. Now watch him with the crossover dribble. Boy, he used it effectively there. Anthony Parker was number two in voting and newcomer of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference last year. This guy is a complete basketball player. He's played really well as a freshman. Well, you got a true indication, Larry, as to the complete package in that transition. Take a look. Now, Bradley basically in a man-to-man -man defense, but really packing it in. They extended only when those three-point shooters go beyond the arc. Waldman. That's a tray for H. Waldman. An H-bomb. Transferred over from Nevada, Las Vegas. Actually played on that team that had Greg Anthony, Anderson Hunt, and eventually lost the championship games back in 91, you'll recall. Good shot. Deion Jackson, who had a really difficult game yesterday against Oregon State, Tim. He's a very streaky star. This guy has been a terrific player for Bradley for the last two years. Keep an eye on him to see how he gets oh. started. And Waldman again. Oh, that could be a four-point play. Highmark got it. Highmark and Waldman very active, and Highmark gets credit for this one. That is what Molinari was concerned about, managing to hang around five minutes deep into that first TV timeout because he knew that this club would come out and rain some threes and also come through with some defensive pressure. He wanted his team to just endure the opening moments of this game. Well, you've got to come out and play Claggett, Waldman, and Highmark. All three excellent shooters. St. Louis changing their defense now. A little half-court trap. Wright and Parker very experienced in the backcourt for Bradley. That defense is very active. Look how they spread the offense. Wide open down the middle. They force the perimeter jumper. Now Klein does have tremendous range for a low post player. He'll play more high post than low. Cleared by Parker. Billy Wright. And that defense gets back, doesn't it? Klein again. Off the front end. Retrieved by Funches. Jackson. Klein. Finally ripped down by Donnie Campbell. Bradley can't convert on four attempts on the other end. Good screen out front. Highmark finds the seam, dumps it to Campbell. And there's the advantage of having good three-point shooters. The ability to force the defense to come out. And if you've got the good first step quickness to blow by them and find openings when the defense switches. Billigan's by three. Parker counted on a foul. Well, is this guy a good-looking young player? Well, we said at the outset it would be a perimeter game. It's living up to the billing. Anthony Parker with those 29 yesterday. As a freshman last year, averaged 11 points in 29 minutes of play. This guy is going to be a big star in the Missouri Valley Conference for years to come. Watch the move inside. Good dish that time. I Mark got it in there. Come out and guard the three. The quickness will get you inside and find some openings. David Robinson picked up the foul, and Parker at the strike. Sophomore out of Naperville, Illinois. What a great rivalry this is between these two clubs. They've been playing basketball for years and years. So close to each other. Molinari 
does survive in a big way. We played just over four, and we're tied. Because they force a large amount of turnovers, and then when we do get a shot, we have to shoot a good percentage. If we don't shoot a good percentage and handle their pressure, this could be a long day. The 39-year-old head coach, Jim Molinari, with his own scouting report on what his club must do to hang with St. Louis. So far, so good. We're tied at 11. Tim Brando, Larry Conley, happy to have you with us. How about the field goal shooting? Bradley, 5 of 8, 63%. St. Louis, 4 of 7, and 3 of 4 from three-point range. As expected. In the backcourt, Waldman, Highmark, Claggett. Claggett trying to run through screens and get available on the wing. Good man-to-man -man defense by Bradley, getting through the screens down inside. With that job by Harris that time, getting outside to make sure. Jeff Harris in the game for the first time for St. Louis. Number 42 in white. Claggett in no man's land that time as he left his feet and a turnover, the end result. Good half-court defense from Bradley. One thing Jim Molinari's clubs have been famous for, the last three years they've been in the top 20 in team defense. It's a good defensive club. Flying double team finally gives it up. Robinson and Funches. Boy, Robinson and Funches, pretty good matchup. And Funches wins that one again. Funches got the first basket on a post up down low on the block. Shows a little versatility with a little turnaround there. On both ends of the floor, 30 in white against 34 in red. Fun to watch down low. Two teams that don't have a big man, but do have, I think, a little strength inside. Perimeter shot won't go for Waldman. Run down by Harris. Waldman passed one up that time. Parker came at him pretty good defensively. Here's Robinson. Off the back iron. Chad Klein lost it. Robinson knocked it away. It'll be controlled to Bradley. Tim, so far, I'd have to give high marks at Jim Molinari's club, the way they're playing on their defensive end. They really have extended St. Louis's offense out a little bit further, and they've shut down their inside game. Adebayo Akunkuli has come into the game for the first time, number 42 for Bradley. He's also been joined by number five, Aaron Zobrist, sophomore out of Metamore, Illinois. Akinkule, young man that can run the floor well, number 55. He stands 6'8". They'd like to see him bulk up a bit. What was it, Jim Molinari, six-year-old kid called him? Akinkule. Yeah, he's just Kool-Aid. <laughs> Gonna be a good player. Got good size. Red shirt freshman. Out of Morgan Park in Chicago. Braves by two, 13 to 11. High mark. Rejected by Akin Kule. Oh, I thought that might have been goaltending, Tim. That ball looked like it was on its way down. Good deep pitch by Claggett outside. He's now picked up Parker. A little bit of a switch on defense that time. Zobrist is a three-point shooting phenom, and he wants it right now. Curtis Kunar made a good defensive alteration there, putting Claggett on Parker, who just released one and missed. Long rebound, control to Waldman. High mark on the wing. Splits a triple team and draws the foul. Oh, that's just a tremendous play. That quick burst, the first step, very key for Scott Highmark. Highmark had an opportunity for a three-point play there, Tim. This morning I was watching in the workout that uh, Bradley was going through how tight these rims are. Now watch this layup. He'll go up and lay it softly off that glass, but the rim rolled it back out. I think these rims are really tight here in the uh, heel center. Well, what a great building this is, too, folks. If you have an opportunity to come to St. Louis, you've got to come by and see this building. It is magnificent. The capacity here is 20,000. They anticipate somewhere in the neighborhood of 17,5. 17,500 for this one. And uh, it is a, really uh, an upgraded version of Madison Square Garden. I was going to say it looks similar to an arena you and I have spent a few hours in. Billikens and Braves are tied at 13. Almost seven minutes deep into the opening half. St. 
they look really extended their man-to-man -man defense. They may, this may help Bradley on the inside if they want to push it down in there. Carl Turner, number 10, is in the game in the backcourt. A defensive whiz that Charlie Spoonauer will use. Here's right off the front iron, and Turner gets it for the Billikens. And he'll operate with this three-guard offense now. Nice, nice look. Harris from Highmark. Good cut. The good pass. The good cut by Harris. When you get the overplay, look for the backdoor cut. He did. Right on the wing to Zobrist. We told you he is a three-point shooting phenom. And up at the top of your screen, Charlie Spoonauer recognizing that you've got to spot defensively those shooters. And that time, St. Louis did a poor job of it. Claggett again gets caught in the air, but Harris bails him out. Akin Kule with his second rejection since coming in. Red shirt freshman doing the job on the defensive end. Now again, look at the pressure out front by St. Louis. Really overplaying. In fact, Bradley's going to have to take a timeout. They can't get rid of the ball. Charlie Spoonauer and Jim Molinari going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a one-point game early on. Lead the Billikens by one, 11.44 remaining in the opening half here at the inaugural for basketball here at the Keel Center. And there is Charlie Spoonauer. What a success story he's been, as Larry mentioned, at every level today, decked out in the mock turtleneck. If uh, this doesn't work out, he could be a host on Fox's uh, studio show, I think. Tim, I, I sat in <laughs> yesterday on their workout. I want to tell you what, he gets right in the middle of their practice sessions out there. When they were working on their press, I thought those guys were going to run him down. Yeah. Talk about a fire in the belly. This guy really still has it. Wonderful. Nice turnaround that doesn't go for Deion Jackson. Ted Hillary spots the foul. Donnie Campbell will pick it up. in a good matchup between two clubs I think that are pretty evenly matched. St. Louis the senior dominated club and uh, Bradley with no one in that starting lineup who's uh, more than a junior so this is a very strong underclass that Bradley has. Zobras boy did you see him run off that screen and square the shoulders he's got a quick gun not a lot of people can square the shoulders and turn and shoot the three that quickly. He picked Turner off exactly the way you're supposed to do it coming off of that screen. Receive the ball and go up. 18-15. High mark is rejected. And Molinari's low post, consisting of Jackson and since Akin Kule came into the game, have been a real factor down on the baseline. St. Louis may want to think about those threes a little bit more because every time they go inside, it seems to get rejected. Pretty good defensive club Bradley is on the inside, on the interior. Carlos McCauley, number 12 in white, just entering the game for St. Louis. That'll be a walk against David Robinson. Picked up his pivot foot on the ball fake. I tell you, I see more and more of that in college basketball now. The guy getting that one, that really that extra step, and he'll lift it up. Officials are very quick to point that out and blow that whistle. Bradley with Akin Kule, Jackson, Chad Klein, Zobrist, and Parker on the floor. Zone trap again by the Billikens. Bradley doing a nice job of handling it. Until then. Zobrist to move to the point after the substitution turns it over as uh, Jim Molinari shows his concern. See, that's pretty good. That's only the second turnover for this club, but we're midway through this first half right now. And Ken Kule just didn't make his move to the outside. Let's see what happens in St. Louis on this trip. Good double screen down inside. Turner pass over. Out of bounds. Last touch by Bradley. Tim Bradley really has a good team defensive concept. When one of their players gets beat, particularly going down that lane, you'll see a lot of red shirts converge on that ball. They did that time and knocked it out of bounds on St. Louis. Now with it back. Waldman. Well, he nearly got that one to go as Zobrist picks up the foul. Waldman just checking in a moment ago there for Scott Highmark. And now coming back into the game, Dwayne Funches for Bradley. And Akin Kule sits down after a nice complimentary three minutes of action. Two rejections that were noteworthy while he was in there. I think a pretty good idea on Jim Molinari's part to get a lot of players in there today because... 
got to worry about those legs a little bit, just having played in Peoria yesterday. Anthony Parker had 29 points in that game. And Billy Wright, he told us, Jim Molinari, that Wright, his guard, had to play 39 minutes in that win over Oregon State. So, yes, he definitely needs to give those guys a bit of a break. Well, he's got Wright out of the lineup right now, and he's got uh, Zombrist out front handling the basketball. St. Louis back again with three-quarter pressure now. Bradley leads it by two. Turner, very good defender right now on Parker. And Charlie Spoonar has decided he's not going to let Parker beat him today. He's put his defensive stoppers on him at each call. Jackson on the baseline, can't get it to fall. Loose ball, Waldman is on the deck, and it'll be a tie ball. Arrow to St. Louis. It's going the other way, folks. Good effort down inside by both these clubs. You know, anytime that ball goes to the floor and you see bodies flying around down there, it's important for them to come up with it. And these guys really, you know, early season, we're just talking November right now. Sitting here at the Peel Center, we've got look, what looks like 17 or 18,000 people in here. Of course, they're starved for a little bit of sports yeah. action around here. You know, with the, with the Blues not playing hockey and the Cardinals shutting it down in August. Charlie Spoonar says, uh, I don't know if we're going to be very good, but at least we are playing. That's right. That's It's his town. Klein got in the way of that one. Loose ball again, fought for and cleared by Harris. St. Louis has 12 on the shot clock. Claggett works on Parker. McCauley dumps it down to Robinson. Can't get it to go. Pull down by Funches. Bradley doing a good defensive job off Claggett. Well, they are taking away the baseline. Watch, watch the alignment now. Watch Klein go back down inside, try to set a screen. Can't, good steal by Claggett. Three on two. Waldman. I almost get the feeling watching Erwin Claggett play today that he's not even looking for his shot. He's content to just deal the ball off and let somebody else do the scoring. This man is a great Midwest Conference all-time scorer. Since this league has started, he leads this league in scoring. Well, Arkansas trying to rebound from that loss to UMass with a healthy lead on Georgetown. Funches. Spin move, but look at him follow it. Zobrist for three. Boy, Zobrist, since coming in, He's had one turnover, but more importantly, a couple of threes and eight points in the game, and the Braves lead 21-18. Again, good defense by Bradley. Just flag it with the ball. Does he need to look for his scoring? Yes. Boy, uh, is he connected with you somehow? Do you think he heard you? Well, you know, it's time when you're, when you're a scorer like that, you got to do something for your club. Get a little selfish. Do something to help your team, and that's scoring for him. 21-20, Bradley by one. Parker, Look nice one-on-one -on -one move. Buffalo. Was that pretty? A thing of beauty from Anthony Parker. Was that a good-looking sophomore? His dad played for Iowa back in the 70s. Oh, you know you're getting old when the dads played in the 70s. <laughs> you remember it? Oh, please. <laughs> Parker on Claggett now out front. They're trying to set a screen to Breen. Bad pass. Again, Claggett, he has that problem from time to time. He gets up in the air and forces himself into difficulty when trying to trigger it inside. Well, Parker did a nice job defensively that time. Funches. Boy, he, he, he break away, and he draws the foul. Tim, I think the most active guy on this Bradley club so far down inside has been Funches. Take a look again at Zobrist inside with a good bounce pass away from the defense. Excellent pass. Good, strong move in there. And Dwayne Funches really doing a number inside against this Billiton defense. Robinson picked up the foul, his second. Here we go. And we talked about St. Louis's perimeter game. I think Bradley's inside game equally as effective right now. Well, the only guy that's been able to cut into the painted area and beat his man has been Dwayne Funches. For the most part, the Billikens have done a nice job of 
keeping Bradley off the baseline other than him cutting into the lane. From the looks of his face, he's been in the paint a few times, right? <laughs> well, they one played on the one, cheek. Yeah, they played one game yesterday against Oregon State, so you know, whether that came from that game yesterday or practice. We've got a timeout. Just under seven minutes to play in the opening half on ESPN. A good one for the Roadrunners from Bradley. Cinema. The DirecTV Grade 8 Festival. Catch Florida Boston College and Duke UConn on Tuesday, followed by Missouri Purdue and Michigan Arizona on Wednesday. Only on ESPN. And the Braves are still on the warpath. They're up by four here in the first half against the Billikens. Watch the good move inside by Anthony Parker. See Claggett right there, a good defender. The spin move, good size advantage, about five inches. He gets it up over Waldman and Claggett. Anthony Parker with seven points so far in the first half and doing a yeoman's work down inside. Good just, player. Just has a tremendous feel for the game. And in addition to being an offensive force, he defends well and can go up and get you some rebounds. There's that walk again from Robinson with the ball fake yet again. Second time he's lifted that pivot foot and another, another turnover for St. Louis. Jimmy Molinari, Larry, will turn 40 on December the 27th. Not many people realize this about Molinari. He played at Illinois Wesley and graduated there in 77, but he also played under Jack Hartman his first two years at Kansas State. And that had much to do with his development, not only as a player, but potentially as a coach. Well, Jack Hartman was uh, known for his good defensive clubs, and uh, he just simply carried it on to leave the position of having good defensive teams. That'll be illegal a, screen. Well, the illegal screen. Spotted against Funches. That's his second. He's trying to explain to Eric Harmon that this was a legal screen. Watch it again. Funches comes up. Flag of trying to get around him. Eric Harmon says, I'll have nothing to do with that. We're going to go the other way. H. Waldman back on the floor with Claggett who now gets into the painted area and knocks it down. Now, Tim, what caused that to, to happen there was the fact that Claggett got a good rub off on the screen and he freed himself from Parker. Parker's done a pretty good job defending him so far in this first half. Corey Grays is in the game, number 23 in white. In addition to CQ Barantine, seeing his first action, number 45 for St. Louis, with that veteran backcourt. Well, nice defensive work there by Highmark. Claggett. The Baron team. And the sophomore from Texarkana, Texas, about a mile from Louisiana, puts it in. Like it doing nice work on the defensive end over there. Tough to get that ball away from Billy Wright. Good trap. Punches. Good look to Coupette. Ben Coupette, sophomore from Chicago out of Simeon High School, celebrated high school program there. Gets his first basket. Bradley having a lot of success inside against the St. Louis defense. A lot of their points from in there, and then Zobris from the outside, along with Parker. High mark, got his man airborne, and managed to draw the foul. Deion Jackson, and uh, in addition, Coupette were up. It will be Coupette that gets credit for the foul, rather than Jackson. Chad Klein comes in, Funches checks out, and number 10, Carl Turner coming into the game for St. Louis. As Erwin Claggett sits down. First team Great Midwest Claggett last year, third team All-America according to the basketball writers. Don't forget, NCAA basketball continues Tuesday with the DirecTV Great Eight. It's Florida against BC and Duke taking on Connecticut. Make your plans to be with us, it's the inaugural. Great eight. Well, that time Scott Highmark got a good roll off of that rim. Local product. St. Louis here at Parkway West High School. Oh, 
Not many runs in this game. It's been back and forth throughout. No one getting a large lead. But, Tim, it's the type of game I really expected to see today. I thought these clubs were very evenly matched coming in. High mark on the reach in, going over the back of Chad Klein. Well, Jim Molinari has really concentrated his offense down inside. He has really tried to push it in there to put the pressure on that St. Louis defense. Give him a lot of credit for his game plan today, and so far it's worked well. Jim Molinari left DePaul as an assistant. He had immediate success at Northern Illinois in DeKalb. They won 25 games there. Highmark. Boy, it's the H&H &H group, right? Highmark, good pass by Waldman. So the Billikens with a two-point lead, and the fans try to get involved. Nice job that time inside. Defensively, they're shutting them down, not letting them penetrate. B. Wright had to pick up his ball. Carl Turner doing nice work. Loose ball. Waldman and Highmark in the thick of it again. Turner with penetration. There's your shooter. Right there. Off the front iron. Jackson brings it down as Highmark couldn't hit. Give it up. <laughs> Deion Jackson, he fought his way through about what seemed like 15 guys. Right, looks off to Coupette baseline. Can't get it to fall, controlled by St. Louis. Corey Gray is pulling that one down. A little fast and furious with some quick launches in the last couple of sequences for both teams. Akin Kule is going to come back into the game when we return. The Braves and the Billikens staying right with one another. 25 to go in the half. Coming up tonight, it's the New England Patriots and the Indianapolis Colts, a game that really could help determine the AFC East wild card for the winner. Both are five and six coming in. Bledsoe in the air and Marshall rules on the ground for the Colts tonight right here on ESPN at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Largest lead in this game has been four for either team. And a five-second call. Great defense by the Billikens. Jim Molinari a little upset with that one. But guys, you got to get open. Somebody's got to get to the ball. Tim, this has been a well-played first half. We haven't had a, an excessive number of turnovers. Both teams taking care of the basketball, getting good shots like that one. Flag He's Jackson having tough luck today. Yeah, he is. I think early on, when he wasn't looking for a shot, he may have gotten out of his offensive rhythm. That can happen to you, particularly when you're a scorer. Zobras turns it over again, anticipating a move from Klein that wasn't coming. I've seen a definite tightening down of the screws on the inside, particularly the defensive end for St. Louis, not allowing that ball to come inside as frequently as it was earlier in this half. Hopkins, Boulay, Zobras in the game along with Billy Wright, Chad Klein, and Jackson. Flagging. Works past Wright. Rattles it home. You can't keep a good scorer down. Well, you have to like the idea, too. If you're not hitting the perimeter jumper, take it inside. Well, he's got a size advantage, just a little one over right. He's got about two or three inches on him. Zobris with a pretty good look to Jackson, his double team. Akin Kule saves it to right. Zobris off the dribble. Zobris stays with it. Harris brings it down. Jeff Harris, the sophomore from Little Rock, Arkansas. Flag it for three. Klein gets away perhaps with a push, but brings down the rebound. Bradley's gone cold from the field. It's difficult to get the ball on the inside and extended in the defense by flagging outside to shut down the perimeter shooting. Zobris not having the success he was having early on. This is a 10-2 run for St. Louis, and they've really done it with defense. Wright hits a three to silence the crowd. And Claggett was on his backside when Wright got the shot off. 
30 to 29. The Billikens by one. Zobras with very little pressure on the outside on Turner. That'll be a foul, a block against Deion Jackson. That's his second. Well, if Deion Jackson, the young man you see right there, is the only player in Bradley history to lead them in scoring and field goal percentages in his freshman and sophomore year. He's having a struggle today, and he struggled yesterday against Oregon State. I asked Jim Molinari about that, and he told me, he says, you know, when he's having a bad day, somebody on our club will pick it up. And I think it's important that this club realize when their star is not performing well, somebody's got to do it. Parker did it yesterday for them, and so far it's played well today. Jackson is going to be keyed so often in double team that someone has to step up. St. Louis did a nice job of that last year. When Claggett received the double teams, and Jackson now takes the seat as Funches comes in for it. When you, when you get a club that is uh, sort of one man only, it becomes very difficult for you to win games. You need those extra guys to pick up the offensive load. Highmark will pick up the foul as that defensive pressure turned up. He will not get high marks for that particular move right there on the baseline. Anytime you're chasing the ball like that, although it's only a common foul, they're not in the one and one. And make sure you can get to that ball. Only 16 fouls against the Billikens. Chad Klein will come back in. Funches will sit out. Situational substitution by Jimmy Molinari. In this whole first half, Charlie Spoonhour has changed his defenses almost with every trip. Now he's got full court man-to-man -man pressure. They worked a lot on this yesterday in practice, too. Well, the Braves had to know this was coming, particularly considering that they were playing their second game in less than 24 hours. More pressure. That'll be an off-the-ball foul against Bradley. Akin Kule picks it up. Coming up, the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. A look at some fresh faces. Division One's smallest player and NFL scores. All of that coming up at halftime. Got a lot of new fresh faces around college basketball this year. About Felipe Lopez of St. John. Do you think he could play? Cool. His presence already being felt. When you start talking about leagues like the ACC, the SEC, and the Big East, you're talking about two teams in each of those leagues that could be considered powers, dominant powers. And the Big East is back. They're going to have a terrific year. They've got a number of good clubs in that league. Parker, double team. Has to give it up. And it's a turnover. Well, St. Louis doing a great job on that defense. They have just shut Bradley down for about the last six minutes. Short of one three-pointer, and this is the largest lead of the game for either team of five as the waning seconds of the half come to a close. Well, they're going to have what looks like the last shot. There's about three-second differential. Turner loses it. Last touch by the Braves, so it'll be controlled to St. Louis. Four seconds on the shot clock. 8.4 on the game clock. Chris Fowler waiting in the wings with the halftime report. Waldman. Nice ball fake in a three. And just that quickly, the run leads to an eight-point lead. The game's largest here in the inaugural offering from the Keel Center in St. Louis. Our score is 37 to 29. The Billikens by eight. Let's go to a familiar face back in the studio. Well, you're right about those rims. They're not only tight, they're loud. So if it's unkind, it's too loud yeah, too. Downright rude. Bradley the back inside. That's yeah. where they need to go. Dump down to Jackson. And that's an example of the tight rim right there. The ball almost halfway down the cylinder and yet comes off the front rim. Well, it happened to Highmark on a layup earlier. 
David Robinson with his third personal foul. Take a look at the good move here. Now, once you get the ball inside there, now watch the movement. See, Jackson's got good position. He turns, and he's got a good open shot to the basket. Draws the foul from David Robinson. But Bradley had success in the first half going inside. They got away from that in the first half, in the latter stages, only because St. Louis denied the ball. They wouldn't allow them to penetrate into that lane. Deion Jackson, all-conference last year, gained 20 pounds during the offseason. His only problem, the lack of consistency. Once Jim Molinari gets his play to be a bit more consistent, the better off the Bradley Braves will be. And Miss Bradley is going to be some kind of contender in the Missouri Valley Conference along with Southern Illinois, Tulsa, and new entrant, Evansville. Get ready for Jim Cruz. And the guys clad in purple. Interesting that the Missouri Valley Conference picks up one. They lose Tulsa in two years. It goes to the whack. Flaggett with a leaner. Flaggett really works as well nicely on the inside, right into that paint area. Eight points for Irwin Flaggett. You know, when you're a shooter like him, if you can do it on the outside, it puts pressure on the defender to come out and guard. You can see what he can do when he goes inside. Billy, you're right. That's the charge. Player control foul. As defensively, Harris has really done a nice job. Jeff Harris has been outstanding on the offensive glass for St. Louis and also setting up shop defensively as Wright commits his second. And I, both, I think both of these clubs did a little maintenance work at halftime. They came back out here and made a few adjustments. So far, I think St. Louis has picked up right where they left off. Bradley trying to go back inside again. Bradley needs to extend that defense, put a little pressure on Flaggett, Waldman, and Heiss, Heiss, Highmark. Highmark trying to set a screen, but the spacing's not there, so Claggett will isolate. Zobris knocked it away, controlled by Harris, and the shot clock now down to six. Nice play by Punches. Again, another one of those casual pushes to work his way free to come up with a rebound. Well, he is today, and he really has been a star for this Bradley club for the last two years. Jeff Harris picked up that foul, his first, as you see Chad Klein re-entering the game. Just as I said, Jackson has not performed up to the level we expected to see today. He goes to the bench. Zobris was two of three from three-point range. Wright's three on the wing, and Billy Wright knocks one home. He has five in the game. St. Louis with a 10-point cushion. Oh, high mark drives baseline, but into a double team. Now Parker's on the loose with numbers. Zobris. Nice play by Claggett. And that'll be a foul against the Billikens. I think Harris is going to pick that up on the inside. That's Parker tried to get it to right on the left wing over there, and it got deflected. Take a look at it again as Jeff Harris really overpowers. See, Zobris tries to get it. There's the deflection by Claggett. See Harris right there committing the foul. That's two on Harris. In the last uh, two minutes, and a little blood, he'll have to leave the game. A little cut over the right eye. David Robinson checking back in. Anytime the blood is flowing freely, players must leave. Well, they've altered that rule a little bit, you know. Uh, it's really up to the medical personnel to make that decision now, not referees anymore. Yeah. And it gets into the saturation of the uh, uniform of blood, too. That time, there was no saturation. It just simply was uh, on a cut on his eye. Ted Hillary got caught in a situation there where the ball was deflected, but it hit Hillary on the sideline. And because of that, it was last touched, obviously, by St. Louis, as the official does become part of the sideline. He's actually part of the court. If the yep. ball hits him in while he's really inbound, then it continues play. Parker, a leaner. Oh, off the glass. A pretty shot from Parker. Anthony Parker now has nine. And Bradley, once down by 13, claws to with an eight. Jim Molinari's club starting their little comeback here. A mini charge. Flag it. Robinson follows. Klein failed to block out. Seven points for David Robinson. High mark. Yeah, got him. Zobrist handling the basketball now. 
you know, they've taken the ball handling responsibilities away from Billy Wright and given it to Aaron Zobris. Wright's been a little hot. He's had a couple of shots dropped from the outside. Maybe the feeling is that he can continue to shoot from the outside. Let Zobris deal the ball. That's three on high mark. You, you saw him there pointing to his head. He knows what he did. There's a point of emphasis now, particularly in the backcourt. Can't put a body on anyone. They'll have to play smart now, staying in the game with three with 14 minutes to play. You can't put that hand out there for hand checking either. Well, they have really cracked down on that this year. Wright runs off that blind screen, and you're right, Larry. The addition of Wright as a two guard rather than a point guard has been a major adjustment by Jim Molinari. I told you, maintenance at halftime. He came out, made the adjustment, put the ball in Zobra's hands, and let the little guard, Billy Wright, do the shooting. Waldman, oh, Zobris, don't be at all ball, but he'll get caught for the push. You know what? I'm going to agree with Zobris. I thought he had all ball, too. Good spin move in there by Waldman, but Zobris stayed right with him. Let's watch it again. Now, watch the spin move here by Waldman. He can't, oh, a little push off, too. Woo. Slap away right there. Ted Hillary will have nothing to do with it, though. Says the foul will go against Zobris. Flag it. Looks to dish it in, but a bit too low. Akin Kule knocked it away. 34 seconds on the shot clock. Only a second gone in that possession. Robinson again. Akin Kule with three rejections in the game. Loose ball again as Klein knocked that one away. Bradley doing a nice job in this second half on defense. Akin Kule with the blocks in the first half, picked another one up earlier, and they get a turnover. Bradley now with a chance to really close the step. Klein, now that's his spot on the floor. A little too high, and he couldn't get it to fall. He likes shooting from the high post. And a foul down low. Klein in position to pick it up against Donnie Campbell, who's been in the game since... The change was forced due to the blood that was flowing freely earlier from David Robinson. You see CQ Barantine waiting to come in on the next dead ball. He'll no doubt be coming in for Donnie Campbell, so he'll have to wait until the next opportunity. Tennis St. Louis Club is going to have a terrific year this year. I mean, again, I get back to the point I made in the first half about the seniors, but this league has got a number of quality basketball teams in it. I've seen Memphis a couple of times already, and I know Cincinnati's got great talent. I hear the calls on the way back, so look for the great Midwest to be right back in the thick of things when it comes to March and election for tournament time. Well, it's a really amazing the changing face of intercollegiate athletics and all of the moves by certain teams into different leagues that are forthcoming. The great Midwest may be becoming the greater Midwest. Take a look at now, Bradley. Watch St. Louis on their defense. More pressure on the outside. Akin Kule was locked up with Donnie Campbell, and Campbell will get credit for the foul. All of that prior to the shot. That's the third foul on Donnie Campbell, the senior. For, from Cooper Carey, New Mexico. He's a second team junior college All American at Eastern Wyoming. And now you see coming back into the game, Barantine for Donnie Campbell. Zobrist will trigger it in for Bradley as Dwayne Funches returns and Chad Klein takes the seat. St. Louis on a man-to-man -man defense on the uh, out-of-bounds play. Very rarely you see that in college basketball. There's that quick trigger. Oh, does he have a quick one? Three out of four from three-point range for Zobris, and many of them, Larry, just that quick. How he squares the shoulders, and Bradley with a 10-2 run of their own in the last four minutes, and they're only down four. Yeah, we talked about that St. Louis run into the first half. Bradley's picked it up here in the second. Count it and a foul. Barantine over Akin Kule. Then what caused that to happen was Akin Kule trying to go help. See, he looks around, sees somebody, then tries to get back too late. He was trying to help one of his own teammates on a man cutting through away from the ball, and when he turned his head, the ball went inside. 
and obviously at that point he was in trouble because Barron team was right there to lay it up. Never turn your back on the ball. You got to know where the ball is. You can find a man, but when you lose that ball, you're in trouble. Scott Highmark re-entered the game. Carl Turner is also on the floor for St. Louis with Barantine, Robinson, and H. Waldman. Half-court trap again by St. Louis. They're back in that 1-1-3 one, one, zone. Sue Turner out top, Waldman in the middle. On the wing, knocked home by Deion Jackson, and that has to be good news for Jimmy Molinari yeah. to see him knock one down. He needs him to step up right now. Good chance for him to really assert himself. They've climbed back within four. Waldman and Highmark, no doubt, will start launching. It's been a while since we've heard from either of them. On the run out, pass gets away. You know what, Jim Molinari is upset with Parker. You know why? He didn't want to throw that ball to Funches. He says, take care of it. Don't give it to him on the run like that. Over Bradley, 11-27 remaining in the second half. We talked about it earlier. Make no doubt, football drives this decision for these schools to now join up in a league that has not as yet been named for the moment. We'll just call it, for lack of a better term, the greater Midwest. But that is going to be an outstanding league, Larry. Tim, they're actually drawing from three leagues. The great Midwest, they're also drawing Houston from the Southwest, which I guess will come, become now part of the Big 12. And also they're drawing from the Metro. We had a question mark by UAB because they have a Division I football program that will be coming online soon. The question is, when are they going to allow them to play football within that league? There are six teams already playing there, and you saw the other three that do play basketball but no football. Scott Highmark turned that one over, so it goes right back to Bradley. You know what? They talked about football, but I think what they have created is a terrific basketball league. I think the teams involved in that league are going to be just incredibly good. Well, it's similar to the SEC going to 12 teams and breaking away into divisions, all football-driven, but it really aids basketball. Well, the SEC's got a number of quality basketball teams in a league this year, five that I'm sure of. Parker looks to Jackson. You know he wants to put it up. He hit his last one. He hits his next one. Jim, and it's now a two-point game. Jim Molinari was begging for a foul on that, too. He felt like he got hammered. But what a comeback by Bradley. Down by 13, only 90 seconds deep into this half. You'll recall St. Louis had five unanswered to open the second half after leading by eight. And suddenly Highmark is off mark. Out of bounds to St. Louis. Ever since Scott Highmark picked up his third foul, Larry, he's been out of sync on the offensive end. I'll tell you the other thing, too, is St. Louis has become very, very patient on offense, and it's because Bradley's defense has turned it up a notch. They have gotten after this Billiken team, and Charlie Spoonar with his offense now in front of his bench Really letting his players know about it. Carlos McCauley is coming to the game. Jeff Harris is re-entered. Now Highmark with a runner. That's what we saw in the first half when he scored 16 points. That's his first basket of the second half, and it comes 10 minutes deep. Right. Splits the double team. Draws the foul from H. Waldman. Look at the numbers in the second half. What a difference a half makes. Well, what's happened is St. Louis is basically the same, but Bradley's improved their shooting. I mean, 50% yep. is not bad. They've gone to 64%, getting good shots. And they've managed to get inside a time or two. And clearly, getting right loose on the wing with Zobrist at the point made a difference. St. Louis back into that straight man-to-man. -man. A lot of pressure on the ball and good help away from the ball. That'll be a push. Off the ball, it'll go against Funches. Funches trying to post up on the inside. He had Scott Highmark down on the block, but they couldn't get the ball to him. He's trying to create a little more of an advantage for himself, and when he did, Tommy O'Neill caught him, and it goes the other way. St. Louis will get it back now with a four-point lead. Funches has three. Claggett re-entered the game, and Carlos McCauley took a seat during that dead ball. 
so far. Bradley not showing any ill effects of that game yesterday. Their club has come out ready to play the second half. You gotta give Jim Molinari and his staff a lot of credit. He's got his club motivated to play. Claggett dumps it to Highmark. Well-conceived play, but they were unable to finish. And the foul in the aftermath of that. Robinson was involved. Number 30 in white. Take a look at this movement down inside. Good move by Highmark. Watch him make this little turn like a wheel going down inside. He gets the basketball up, but he can't get the basket. He's having a tough second half. Only one basket so far for him in this second half. Jeff Harris got credit for the foul. His third. Number 42 in white. You see they're taking care of the blood that was flowing from his eyebrow. And more importantly right now is the fact that Bradley's gone to the line for one and one with 909 left in the second half. Bradley is committed a total. How many team fouls do they have so far? Five? Bradley now with five team fouls and seven for the Billikens as you mentioned and that is a major factor Molinari's club has a tendency of getting to the line more often than the opposition well they say sometimes a classic tweener can help your club if that be the case Funches is a classic uh, he, listen he is terrific because he's very strong on the inside you won't find many 6-5 players will be able to contest him down low Billikens by two now you see him out front guarding Lewis trying to post up inside. Harris rejected but fouled. Deion Jackson will be tagged. The ball went inside a couple of times. Jackson stayed inside and tried to protect the ball when Harris got it. In fact, the ball went in and then back out and then back in again. Good turn that time by Harris and Jackson gets him on the arm. Complaining and saying, no, I did not do that. Harris comes from some excellent basketball stock. Played on a state title team at Parkview and Little Rock, Arkansas. And I tell you, you look at guys like Harris and Donnie Campbell, David Robinson, and to some extent, Barantine. I think the development of Charlie Spoonauer's smallish front line could really help this club. This well, he's going to need it simply because of all the seniors he's got. He's going to lose so many players going to have to give these young players a chance to play a little bit this year and maybe the seniors not as much time he lost a pair of players from last year's 23 win club Donnie Dobbs and Evan Peterson notably in the middle 52 48 Billikens by four Waldman with a steal saved to Harris terrific defensive individual play that time Waldman was all over Once again, St. Louis looking inside. There's the shot. Flag it. Parker and Robinson kept that one alive. Last touch by David will be over to Bradley. Tim, go back and take a look at this defensive effort again by H. Waldman. Watch him come up with this ball. Look at that excellent play. He wiped out about 4,000 of the $1,000 per seat customers over there. But that's okay. Charlie will take that with the ball. Sobris being checked by Highmark. And another whistle, this one against Robinson, trying to check Deion Jackson. I mean, you can really tell that the Billikens are aware that Deion Jackson may be a shade or two away from really getting on a roll because Spoonauer is really concentrating his defense on him. Our Canadian Football's Championship, the Grey Cup, is coming up Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. And how about the Baltimore CFLs? complete with their Colts headgear taking on the BC Lions we'll see the Grey Cup finale on ESPN. I saw tape piece the other day the Canadians are a little upset that uh, the Baltimore team is playing for that championship. That league of course is uh, coming into the United States a new team uh, in the offing in Memphis even some talk about a team on Long Island. Waldman can't get it to go. Did not have his feet underneath the ball balance a little bit. Waldman looks a little out of sync so far, Tim, in this game. Still got seven and a half minutes left to play. But he's not had the typical game you'll see out of him. Right on the wing and Zobra step high. Punches inside. Throws up a brick. Then here's the flag. That one was kicked 
by right and he'll try to lobby with Ted Hillary but he won't win. <laughs> Obviously Billy said something to Ted Hillary to get a little snicker out of him. He's got a nice debate department by the way over at Bradley and Peoria. <laughs> Get a head start. Television impact now is geared towards football, and everyone uh, wants to be uh, in a league that's got football base. But our basketball, uh, our basketball is outstanding. Cincinnati is a, is a wonderful program. I mean, Huggins has done such a good job. Larry Finch has got some great kids, and he'll he'll get those kids where they'll they'll be really tough when we get into our season. DePaul. Good. Got a, Joey's got a nice team this year. Marquette's going to be better than anybody thinks. And you add Louisville, and you don't have to say more. Just Louisville, and they're they're good. Two lanes, good. Uh, Southern Miss. MK's going to put together a good program. You're going to have uh, Houston's uh, had a great recruiting year. So we're we're happy to be part of that. We're very fortunate to be part of that. I'd say, according to Spoon, they're all pretty good. Well, I'll and tell you right. what, he is right. You ask him about his coach compared to the others, and he'll, he'll tell you, now we're on the bottom of the league. We're not that good. Okay, Charlie, spoonball. Maybe a little spoon chicanery. Yeah. Harris working over Klein. Draws the foul, does not get it to go. Well, how could you have any problem, though, with a guy like Charlie Spoonhour? I mean, here's a guy that likes the Doobie Brothers, the Eagles, and Jimmy Buffett, and has been to Margaritaville, by the way. Well, my conversation with him yesterday, we talked about the Eagles. I said, well, what's your favorite song? And almost in unison, we said, Desperado. <laughs> <laughs> he went to their concert uh, some time ago. In fact, he told me he went to a Grateful Dead concert, too. This guy loves music. Yeah, he really does. We need to get he and Cliff Ellis together somewhere in the Florida Peninsula <laughs> playing a little beach music. Jeff Harris has really been a fine compliment to Spoonhour's team today coming off the bench. And it's now 54-48 as the Billikens have answered the Bradley run. Spoonhour again changes his defense. He's back in a straight man-to-man, -man, a lot of pressure. Good screens by Bradley. Wright got free. Claggett with good, good catch-up. Zobris looking for a cutter down low, and Wright is that cutter for three. Off the iron, cleared to Highmark. Bradley with not nearly as much pressure as St. Louis was putting on coming out of that timeout. Let's see if they try to go back inside. They're not having a lot of success on the outside. You know, they're five of 16 so far from three-point range, and Claggett goes inside. Campbell rejected. Harris, yes, and a foul. I'd say that's some quality complimentary work. Well, Harris off of the bench, doing great work. Claggett with a great pass. Pump fake, Klein doesn't bite. Good block inside there by Ken Kule. He comes back and Klein gets him. Harris is happy. St. Louis has got two with a chance for three. Take a look at Claggett with a good bounce pass. Good pump fake. Clyde didn't bite, though. Well, I'll tell you what, Harris having a good, good game off of the bench. Nice to have those subs that come up and give you performances like that. He's really been the stabilizer of the low post for St. Louis off that bench. And that lead now. Back up to nine. Well, we talked about underclassmen. They're going to have to perform for this Billiken club. Harris is one of them. He's a sophomore. Akin Kule on the baseline. Gets a kind roll off the back rim. 57-50 our score. St. Louis by seven. Bradley's going to let St. Louis run their offense. So far, St. Louis has picked it back up now. They've stretched that lead out to seven, and I think it's principally because they've got a chance to run their offense. Bradley's defense, not as much pressure as it was early. Yeah, perhaps those uh, legs are a little weary late in the game. Parker rejects Claggett, rejects him again, and Billy Wright comes out of there with it. See, Claggett put himself in jeopardy that time. When he goes inside against a guy who's five inches taller than he is, he puts himself in a situation where he can't get anything done. Parker was good defensive work that time. That's three times today, Larry, we've seen Claggett leave his feet and then ultimately lose the ball. 
Akin Kule trying to get position. Parker. Oh, nice what move. a reversal. Oh, Parker. What a move as he took the baseline. Well, he got Campbell. He really duped Campbell. Campbell started to head back for his man and kept right on going baseline. Oh, he schooled him. 57-52. Billikens by five. Parker again. Good looking sophomore. Flaggett with a turnaround. Draws the foul from Zobris. Take a look at this. This is just a honey sweet move. Yeah, watch this again. Now watch 44 Campbell. See, he goes and helps. He says, all right, I got him stopped. Oh, don't have him stopped. Parker kept right on going. Had a little hesitation, really caught Campbell. Nailed to the floor. That was a terrific offensive move. Atkin Cooley leaves the game. And Funches has re-entered for Bradley. How many Parker got today? He has really been nailing. Parker has had a tremendous game offensively, but particularly in the second half. He has 11 points, most of those points coming here in the half. Well, they really had to adjust their perimeter. Zobris becoming a point, looking for right on the wing, as opposed to the reverse of that at the outset of the game. Molinari has made a number of adjustments to the St. Louis defense as well. Zobris with a dump down to Jackson. On the baseline, nice move by Dion Jackson. That's his spot. Working over David Robinson. Jackson now with 11. And he's hit his last three from the floor. Bradley needs a couple of stops here. If they're going to get back in this game. They don't want to trade baskets. They're under four minutes to play now. Robinson up high. Funches keeping it alive. But H. Waldman finally finds it. And a rejection by Jackson. Deion Jackson with a tremendous play defensively. They got their stop. Now they need their basket. Jim Molinari telling his club to pull it back out and run the offense. Billy Wright hurt him. Tobrist looks to Jackson. In the double team again. They'll have to give it up. Wright can't get it to go. And Jimmy Molinari very upset. The foul will go against St. Louis. Tim, he's Actually, really... it's going to go against Jackson with a push. And He's concerned that they rushed yeah, that exactly. sequence. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. He was upset with Billy Wright for taking that shot. He was off balance, and he didn't want that shot. You can hear him right there. He said, come on, Billy. He said, you know better than that. You know how to play this game. And he did take an off balance shot, and they still had 12 seconds left on the shot clock. In that entire sequence, sometimes you anticipate a big possession as a young team. That team really felt that that was a big possession, and they rushed the entire sequence. Yeah, they did, and Jim Molinari knew that was a big possession. That could have gotten them within three, perhaps even two, had they gotten a three. Now they're back with another chance. Well, Wright is operating at the top, so you figure Parker or Zobras. Charlie Spoonauer well out of the coach's box all the way to midcourt. He wanted two shots on that last foul. Didn't understand why he didn't get it. With the 10 team fouls, he should have. That'll be a charge against Funchez. But that is exactly why Charlie Spoonauer had come to midcourt. Because the 10 team fouls had been committed. Which mandates a two shot foul. Now they've got a correctable error here. In the situation, right? They're having a discussion. Charlie's having his explanation, right? He told Jim Molinari, he says, I should have gotten two free throws. Now let's see what happens here. Ted Hillary's going to have a conversation with the official scorer. Uh, high intensity there from Molinari. Do you see Spoonauer offering the towel? He said, go ahead and wipe off a little bit. While they discuss the matter and clear the situation up, we'll take a break. 59-54. 9-54, St. Louis by five. And as my partner mentioned prior to going to break, 
we had a correctable error situation crop up, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Tim, here's what, here's the situation. The official score indicated there were 10 fouls. But when the 10 fouls were indicated, the official thought it was one and one, when actually it was two shots. Now, they shot one free throw, and the play continued on the other end. You've got a player control foul, so now what they're going to do is go back and allow St. Louis to shoot that second free throw. Then they come back and pick play up right where it ended, which will give St. Louis the ball back again. So now they not only get the free throw, but they also get the ball back. Now that's the only aspect of this that bothers Jim Molinari. Uh, if you're going to correct the error, do so prior to the time that you give up the ball on a player control foul. And uh, he's all smiles about it now. But uh, again, it's, un it's an unfortunate break for his ball club. Well, it was a breakdown in communication between the official scorer and the referee. Because when he asked whether it was one and one or two, the official scorer held up ten fingers, indicating it was a tenth foul, and it was misinterpreted by the officials, and they thought they still had one and one. So once again, Robinson will go back to the line for the second of what should have been a two-shot foul that in essence was played out as one and a bonus. So it's now a six-point game, right. and St. Louis will trigger and it in because the of the right. foul against Funches that stopped play and gave the opportunity for the officials to correct the error. And that's what Charlie Spoonauer was trying to get at midcourt moments ago. The lead is six for the Billikens. Bradley again needs another stop. A little bit more pressure on defense. Well, you figure Claggett now must penetrate. Shot clock is under 10. He does. Gets into trouble, and it's a shot clock violation. That's another example, Larry, of Claggett's penchant for getting up in the air while driving to the basket and getting into no man's land. Well, Tim, the problem was he laid it off of the head of Jeff Harris. Harris was facing the basket, and he bounced it off his head. St. Louis not showing a lot of poise for a senior-dominated club in the stretch run here in this last couple of minutes. Good trap. That's a walk off the trap from H. Waldman. Parker turns it over and Robinson also involved defensively you know you can make a case we talked about the weary legs of Bradley but what you mentioned moments ago about St. Louis a senior dominated club it's still game one you know it is still game one of your season for them now important again St. Louis needs a basket here we talked about Bradley stops and Charlie Spoon and I are realizing that takes a timeout that's a good call right there That'll leave him with two timeouts remaining. The Braves have one as we come to the stretch run here in St. Louis. We'll be back. Football is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1995 Lincoln Luxury Automobiles. From the beautiful palatial Keel Center, Tim Brando, Larry Conley, a six-point game. You talked about the senior domination on this team. They have not been as productive here in half number two. Take a look at the first half, 7-16 and 6 for those three respective triumphants. You look at the second half, 4-2 and 3. I really credit Bradley's defense with being able to shut them down. I talked about the maintenance work at halftime that Jim Molinari did with his Braves. He shut those guys down, and that's the reason they've gotten back within six. What they need now is another stop. Billikens are winning this game, Larry, at the line. They're 17 of 23 at the strike. They'll get there again. As the foul is spotted against Wright. Claggett will get to the line. Bradley only five of nine from the free throw line. So a discrepancy of 12 points at the free throw line. And that's more than half the deficit. There you see it. But the credit has to go to the Billikens for penetration and managing the, to get to the line. That's by design. The thing I'm going to be noticing here, Tim, as we go down to the final minute, 40 seconds, is, is ball management. I want to see which of these clubs really take care of the basketball in this final minute and 40 seconds. Always tells me a little bit about a basketball team and a tight 
really highly competitive game and like this one has been. The lead is eight. And this is almost a must offensive sequence for Bradley. Good trap by St. Louis again. Good idea. Scott Highmark came up. Helped H. Waldman. I'll tell you what, St. Louis does a nice job of trapping. They do it very intelligently. They pick their spots on the floor, where to do it, and when to go after the offensive guy. Billy Wright will head up, now realizing where the trap's coming from, and St. Louis goes to man-to-man -man defense. Now, the quick trigger of Zobris. For the first time, he misses from the top off the back end. You know, he didn't control the pass as easily as he had in prior opportunities. But he was only off the mark by a short margin. A minute left. Bradley's got to think about putting them on the line. Yeah, St. Louis in great shape right now. All they've got to do is just take care of the ball. Flag it to high mark for three. He's had a tough second half. He's had good open shots. Didn't have, just has not made them. Bradley now has to get a quick look. Under 30 seconds left. And they lose it. Nice play by Harris. Boy, he has just delivered a workmanlike performance today. And just that quickly, Claggett loses it out of bounds. Tim, I talked about ball management. Very important in the final two minutes. You take care of that basketball. Bradley lost it, and St. Louis gave it right back to them again. Not what you want out of your team. Right now, Bradley's got to be looking for threes, and this is the guy that can deliver them. Well, he manages to draw the foul at the baseline from Highmark. That'll be his fourth. 19.9 left to play. Ever since the correctable error, Bradley has been out of sync. They have not scored since that sequence. But to recall, they had an opportunity at 58-54, and then the, you had the correctable error come up. And uh, the Billikens came through not only with the free throw, but the ball. Tim, it's not as if they haven't had the opportunity. The chances have been there. They've not been able to capitalize on it. And I get back. I mean, I hate to keep referring to the game yesterday, but sometimes it's very difficult to play a game on your own home court, travel two and a half hours by bus, come down and get ready to play, particularly an afternoon game, two afternoon games back to back. Well, the good news for Jimmy Molinari has to be that this is a, a game that on the road, you come in, you're concerned that you're just going to hang around early in the game. You manage to do that, make a run in the second half. And this is a game that makes the entire Missouri Valley Conference look good against a great Midwest team opening a brand new building. Quick foul committed by Zobrist. Don't forget NFL football coming up tonight. On ESPN, Drew Bledsoe, Marshall Falk will be on display as the Patriots meet the Colts. They're hoping for a possible wild card for either of those clubs, and it's been some time since you could speak that way about those two franchises this late in an NFL season. It's tonight at 8 on ESPN, and Claggett looking to seal it at the strap. Claggett had an off performance today. I don't think he's played the way uh, he expected to play today, even though his free throws have been outstanding. He didn't miss today. His score game was good. His outside shooting was not up to expectations. He'll leave the game with 14 points as Carlos McCauley comes in for him. Looks as if St. Louis is going to get off to an awfully good start here for the 94-95 uh, season. Goldberg hits the three, and Jim Molinari gets the timeout. Well, you have to like his stroke. Oh, you, how can you not? Oh. I mean, let that one go from about 35 feet. It's a good backcourt I think Bradley throws out there. You've got Billy Wright out there, and when you've got Aaron Zobris shooting the way he can, Bradley Club is going to be something to contend with, I think, in this Missouri Valley Conference. Aaron Zobrist is also a player who turned down opportunities at other schools for scholarships to walk on at Bradley. Jim Molinari's club is going to make a serious run for this championship this year. They've got a number of good clubs. I'll tell you, Tubby Smith Tulsa club is going to be awful good this year, too, Tim. Hey, you look at uh, how well teams have done on their home floor, steep in tradition. St. Louis at Keele Auditorium, 83 and 21. 
St. Louis Arena, 30 and 14. And how about the Keel Center? I think it's something that uh, Charlie Spoonauer was concerned about. Would he have the atmosphere in this building? And Larry, I think uh, early signs, early indications are that he will have the kind of atmosphere he wanted in this new building. Take a look at this building. If uh, any of you folks out there have ever been to Madison Square Garden, this is almost a replica of Madison Square Garden. Tell you what, they did everything right. This uh, this building is well put together. I walked in here this morning and I told the the building superintendent it even smells new. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Keel, by the way, the uh, namesake of this building, a very prominent politician in the St. Louis area. This was his brainchild, and they actually took the auditorium, cut it off in half. And you've got a theatrical spectator's delight next door to this magnificent building. Timmy, it was just a few years ago. I played in Old Keel Auditorium. Not many years ago. <laughs> but. Five point game. Highmark will trigger it in with 8.7 remaining. Zobris with the quick foul against Turner. Carl Turner, the senior from Maryland. And that is five on Aaron Zobris, but a job well done for this young man who was called upon to play the point and the off guard today. He leaves with 16 points. And from three-point range, he had a big day as well. Good afternoon for that young man. He's going to have a good year. You know, Tim, this great Midwest conference, and we were talking about St. Louis and their size and, and also their experience. This is, a not, this is not a very tall team. A lot of clubs out there are going to, with size are going to have some uh, big advantages over St. Louis. And on the other hand, they're going to have some problems matching up with this team because they don't throw a big lineup out, out there, but they throw a very experienced and a very quick lineup at you. St. Louis, uh, this could be an interesting year for the Billings. Wright trying to go end to end. There's a foul over the back. Not only is it going to be an interesting year for them, I think Jim Molinari and the Missouri Valley's got a real chance to compete. No reason to believe that either of these teams are going to skip a beat after winning 23 each last year. No, I like Jim Molinari's club. He's got a, a good combination of size. And, and although he has no seniors on this club that uh, play a great deal, he does have one guy who's out, David Winslow, who has a dislocated elbow. In fact, he hurt it in practice diving for a loose ball. He'll contribute a great deal to this club when he gets back and healthy again, but uh, the Bradley team is going to compete very well. Thank you. Coming up next, World Cup skiing. Some slalom action immediately following our game. That'll do it. The Billikens win it by a score of 66 to 59. For Larry Conley, Tim Brando saying so long from St. Louis. Slalom skiing is coming up next.